Okay, now I'm officially here. 600 meters, I think. Right? What's there? You keep me tired. And you keep me tired. Today, I'd like to take you down memory lane. When I first came to Korea in 2005 and I moved to the city of Ulsan, the expat community was so small that the handful of us made up an entire number of less than a hundred, I would assume. Um, and it was very easy to meet people. When I first came here, I didn't know anybody. Um, but I soon met people very quickly. And what's more important, um, most of my friends that I met had very similar interests to mine. And one of them was rock climbing. Ulsan provided the perfect environment for pursuing this hobby with a bunch of people that loved it just as much as I did. And so my first year in Korea, for that reason, was made perfect. Today I'm here to show you around one of the biggest mountains in Ulsan, the biggest mountain in Ulsan, which is Munsusan, which is loaded with the perfect climbing spaces ranging from 5.5 um, all the way to 5.11, I think, A or B, possibly. I can't remember exactly. But we're gonna go up and uh, have a look. My backpack with all the gear has been sitting on top of my uh, closet for the past, I don't know how many years. It's in the back of the trunk of my car. The gear is probably useless, but I'm gonna dig it up and we'll have a look what it looks like. And then we're gonna go for a little walk and I'll show you around. a lot of dust. Rope. Rope bag. These are my wife's climbing shoes. I think she used them once. They're brand new. I think they were too small for her. These are my beat up old climbing shoes. Harness. Carabiners. Chuck. I moved away from my car to a different location because it gives me a bit of an elevation for the camera to position so I can show you some of the stuff, some of the gear easier without me having to lay down on the ground actually. <clears throat> All right. So this is a 60 meter rope. Probably the, one of the longest ropes that you can get as a rec recreational climber. Tightly knit, tightly roped. For those who don't climb, ropes take a beating. There's wear and tear even if they're not being used. Uh, it's recommended that a rope should be tossed every few years uh, to prevent any, you know, unforeseeable accidents. Uh, any weakness in a rope can cause essentially death. If you happen to slip while on the wall uh, and the rope has a weak point, if it breaks, you fall. So um, this rope feels pretty solid, but I'd be pretty scared to use it actually because it sat on my on the top of my closet for the past uh, at least eight years. That's pretty much the last time I climbed. No, probably longer than that. Probably about 10 years. So this rope has at least 10 years under its belt. And even though it does feel solid, it feels firm, I probably wouldn't use it for anything else than maybe wrapping it around some trees to prevent people from falling off the side of the mountain. These shoes are brand new. Bufo. This is a good uh, climbing shoe, brand of climbing shoes. If there's anybody out there who needs some shoes, these have been used only once. Look at the bottom. There's nothing on here. Just a little bit of dust. Perfect condition. My shoes, on the other hand, are a hand-me-downs. The first pair of shoes I ever, climbing shoes I ever bought were from Sportiva, I believe. Stuff was falling apart as it so often does. See at the tip of the sh these shoes, but there is a massive hole in the tip of the this shoe right here. And when you do climb, your hole pokes through. So this is these are not meant for any. It snowed here a couple of days ago, so there is snow all over the trees higher in the mountains here. But these shoes are not meant for climbing. Um, at least for nothing for for nothing that's hardcore. I've used them a couple of times, but uh, the the fact that your big toe keeps slipping out makes climbing difficult. But these are the ones that I've got left. This crazy thing, this is a rope 
uh, washing mash bag. You can wash your rope as long as you don't use soap, I believe. So if it's just water, you can toss your rope in here, throw it in the washing machine and just give it a tumble with some water without any soap. And then you can take it out, lay it out on some flat ground and let it dry. Ropes get grimy with uh, all the chalk and all the dirt that smeared along the wall and you know, ropes drag, ropes drag along the wall. And then uh, if you don't clean them, uh, they age very quickly. I've got two sets of beaners. Beaners pretty much should undergo this uh, similar maintenance to that of ropes. Taking into account that these beaners have not taken a excessive amount of beating, they're made by Black Diamond. I think that's the majority of beaners made. They still look pretty solid, so I, I guess they could still be used. An ATC, this is the only way to go. The automatic ATCs are a pain in the neck. They're too expensive. This costs you about maybe, I don't know right now, maybe $16, $20? Or isn't a proper... Um, I forget what they're called. Would cost set you back about 80 to 100 dollars. And a safety beaner with a cool twist. Check this out. Slings mm. are always useful. If you're doing top, top, uh, top roping, if you're setting up a, a climb from the top of a mountain, these come in useful to set up your triangle shock bag. Very important, especially for someone whose hands keep sweating. There's still chalk in here. Mmm, the smell of chalk. Just the smell alone would make me... would let me get back on the mountain. Oh, I miss that smell. And last but not least, the harness. This is what keeps your ass from falling off the rock. Well, that and the trust that you place in your belayer. Harnesses don't wear off as quickly. You do have to check your loops. Look at this loop. Hardly ever touched. It went through a lot of use many years, but uh, harnesses, unless you really don't take care of them, harnesses last for a long time. And so will this one. I'm not about to show you how to pair, put it on. Number one, I'm wearing jeans. Jeans are not very much recommended for climbing because they're kind of restrictive and they grind into your crotch when, uh, when the belt uh, pulls on and you're a lot better off wearing different pens. But for those who do climb, you'll know what I'm talking about. That's it. I guess I'm gonna pack it all back up and then we'll head back, head up the mountain. at this backpack from someone I don't even know if it's meant for climbing but it's perfect this is a really good backpack from ASICS it's got a lot of pockets and it's meant for rock climbers let's go the Osmo got a little bit of water while it was recording I hope it's not gonna cause any permanent damage it takes about 10 minutes to actually get to the get to the stairs which lead up to the uh, to the slopes that have the climbs. See the snow? It's nice. It's not often that you see snow here in Old Sun. Most climbing here is done on the weekends. We used to come out on Saturdays. A lot of Koreans worked, still worked on Saturdays, so the slopes were pretty much uh, for us, the expats. There were very few Koreans that came out on Saturdays. Most Koreans do come out on Sundays. And Sundays were the days where we took the day off. We'd stay on the rock for as long as there was sunshine. And then head back to either bench warmers, which is now I believe JJ's uh, downtown Ulsan. We'd have lunch or early dinner, I guess. And then continue to party. We're at the stairs. I guess I shouldn't call it stairs. For 
those of you who wondered what this strap across your chest does, I think every single backpack that is meant for kind of mountain climbing has this strap. When you have a heavy back, heavy pack hanging on your shoulders, it puts a lot of strain and cuts off the blood circulation from your shoulders. So this strap pulls the shoulder straps together and it takes some of the weight off your or back, off your shoulders. We're at the stairs for reals now. See? Speedy mode. But there is the first set of climbers you can see right here. Holy cow. I'm so out of shape. I need a minute. A few moments later. Okay, so it took me a couple of minutes to catch my breath. So the stairs themselves take about five minutes to walk up. Ten if you're out of shape, two if you're in shape. Here's the plan. To my left, there's a 20 foot wall, no sorry, 20 meter wall. Uh, that has about three climbers on it right now. So we're gonna go down there to check it out first. And then to my left is the path that we used to take to get up to all the other climbs. This is great, but unless you're a good climber, or I guess a half good climber, you're better off setting up your uh, rope up on top, which means an additional hike around the hill, around the, the wall, setting up the rope on top, dropping it down, and then you've got uh, <clears throat> just uh, a top rope scenario. Uh, to the right, uh, a lot of the climbs are a lot shorter, so uh, it's good for beginners. If you're an advanced, if you're if you're into you know 5.11s, 5.12, 14s, then you might find this uh, piece of cake for the most part. There are only very few climbs here that are, that are in the range of uh, 5, maybe 13 or 5.12, maybe the highest one, I can't really remember. But So that's why we're here and hopefully I can find some engravings. I'm not sure if they're marked or not. I think most, for the most part, it's kind of a, you know, feel to it. It's got a 5.10 or 5.9 or 5.6 feel to it. So, anyway, let's go down this way and say hello to these guys. See what they're doing. Let's go. Lots of gear. <laughs> so there's a lot more than just three people. I thought there was only three people. But there's a lot more. So that's cool. It's a pretty decent day. It's not too cold right now because the sun is out. It was very cold yesterday. And uh, there's only one top rope set up. The other two guys are uh, free climbing, setting up as they go along. Igo iru mo yo. Igo yo. Iti si mal goyo. Guri guri. Guri ah. Guri guri. Guri guri. Two yo. So that's the guri guri. What the guri guri allows you to do is hold the person on ballet without actually having your hands on on the holding onto the rope. It's possible. So in case the ballet is not paying attention and the climber happens to slip and fall, the guri guri will catch him. With an ATC, you have to have your hands on the rope at all times, or it'll just whoosh, slip right through. 그 그리그리 얼마예요? 8만 원이고요. 8만 원? 8만 원. 8만 원 9만 원요? 그리그리 최신 뭐 플러스 이거 나 13만 원. 오. ATC 뭐 2만 원 ATC요? ATC 가이드 3, 4, 3만 원. 3만 원요? 3만 원. 그래. 3만 원. Yeah. yeah. So the Grigri is about uh, depending on the variety. It ranges anywhere from 80 to 90,000 one. Uh, a better one I guess or ATC, I don't know, Grigri plus. Is about 130,000 one, while the ATC is about 30 or 40,000 one. So that's the equivalent of like US or Canadian dollars, I guess. Okay, we'll leave these guys to it. We're gonna head up the hill. 
I'll show you the other climbs. At the top of the mountain there is a temple. Um, so anytime you see <coughs> stairs that are built on the side of the mountains in this fashion, as you saw in the speed up video, um, they're most likely built by um, either the monks residing in these temples or the climbers themselves or the people who visit the mountains. Uh, these riggedy raggedy steps are not usually built by uh, by con any type of conservation arrangement or anything of that sort. Although in the past uh, the expats of Korea there was uh, there was a group I don't know if it's still operation or not but uh, um, it was called uh, climbing initiatives or just initiatives I believe and one of their goals was to travel around Korea and fix some of the anchors that were old and rusted and we were <coughs> We were helping them out here once. We were on the side of this mountain and we were re-drilling some of the anchors. Um, this was about 10 years ago. Uh, and I don't know how, how long anchors last. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>